Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, Chris. Hey. This is Taylor. Oh, hey, Taylor. We'll get, we'll get started about five past. Awesome.
I put the slides uh, in the chat. We'll get started about five past. We'll get started in two minutes. I see Camille is here. Uh, is Brian Grant here? Don't know if he's dialed in today. Chris, good morning. Hey, Ken. How's it going? It's going well. We busy, get started busy, in a minute. Busy, busy morning uh, already. Oh, uh, no worries. I apologize. Yeah, lots of people are either stuck in board meetings or have travel conflicts. So we're a little bit light on TOC members today. But obviously, appreciate your presence. All righty, is uh, Jonathan or Solomon on the call? I don't see them. All right, cool. I'll get started. Um, so yeah, we have a, a lot of TOC members that are currently um, you know, traveling or have conflicts that have uh, come up. So we're a little bit light today, but um, no reason for us not to um, hold the meeting. Um, since Alexis is not here, I will um, drive the meeting um, this time around. In terms of the agenda, um, I'm gonna go through a little bit of an update in terms of the election schedule, um, a little uh, discussion around working group process. We have a community presentation from the cross cloud folks, and then we'll kind of just open it up to questions uh, from the community. So uh, slide six. Um, so we are now uh, in the phase of the election where the TOC is voting on the TOC selected seats. Um, the vote will be closing at the end of day, April 5th, uh, Pacific time. Um, we have 10 fantastic uh, qualified candidates. Um, so I look forward to the TOC, uh, seven TOC members getting their votes in for those um, two TOC selected seats. Does anyone have questions in the community um, based on that process or timing? Cool. 
Um, look forward to making that announcement. Uh, slide seven. Um, so uh, project review backlog, uh, you know, we try to link everything off the spreadsheets um, that are linked off here, but uh, really the main things that I'd like to mention is uh, I'd like to kind of, uh, you know, publicly shame uh, some TOC members to kind of get their votes in for the uh, Linkerd sandbox incubation vote. So far, Brian Grant has voted, so I'm waiting for other TOC members to send their votes in so we could come to a conclusion on that one. Uh, and then Fluent D and Prometheus uh, are in queue to be voted upon to graduate. There's just a couple of small things they need to do uh, before we formally call the uh, graduation uh, on that and to fulfill their um, graduation requirements. Uh, does anyone have any questions here? Awesome. Uh, moving on, slide eight, uh, just a quick update. Um, you know, we have a couple projects that are requesting to be presented to the TOC uh, for um, uh, essentially, uh, you know, getting accepted into the sandbox. Uh, there's telepresence and open messaging. Um, you know, I'd like to call upon our TOC contributors and uh, community members to take a look at these uh, issues before they present and feel free to make any comments there or ask questions uh, to the teams before they formally present uh, to the TOC and wider community. Moving on to slide nine. Um, there's been a, a few folks that have approached the TOC and in particular me of setting up some new working groups. Um, we essentially, had a informal process of doing these and I'm just trying to codify uh, a more formal process on how to propose these uh, similar to kind of how we handle projects where people just send a, a pull request with their proposal and we get community discussion on, on GitHub and, and have a presentation from them. So I'd ask the TOC and the community to take a look at that pull request and hopefully by the next TOC meeting we could get that solidified um, and, and, and kind of move forward so folks from the community could propose uh, some some new working groups that they're interested in exploring. Uh, does anyone have questions on, on on that from the TOC or the community? We can't hear you, Chris. We just don't have questions. No worries. I, I like an, I, I like a very non-controversial TOC meeting. This is this is good news to me. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Uh, yeah, so look forward to that. Please take a look at it. I mean, we're, we're, this is exactly what we're doing anyway for working groups. I, I just need a mechanism for people that are interested in proposing new ones to um, provide an avenue for community discussion. So there's some really cool stuff coming in the pipeline. Uh, people will be excited. Um, all right. Um, uh, next up, I'd like to give a little bit of an update uh, from the CNCFCI working group and the cross cloud uh, community. So if uh, let's see, uh, I don't know if, um, you know, Denver or Lucina is going to be driving, but uh, I think you're on the call. So we'd love to kind of uh, hear from you. Hello, hello. Hey, Lucina. Hey, I, don't, I don't hear you. Okay, I hear someone now. Hey, this is Denver, right? Hey, Taylor, how's it going? Good. All right, uh, it's now uh, off to you, slide 10, so go for it. Sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Awesome, go for it. Look good to y'all? Great. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so it's, um, been a good while since we presented to the TOC. Um, some of you all may have seen some updates um, earlier, but we'll do kind of an overview of everything and see where we're, we're at now. So this is a cross-cloud CI project. Um, here's the cross-cloud CI team. Some of the folks, Denver and Lucina are on the call and I think Watson as well. So a little quick overview of why we're here. Um, as everyone knows, the CNCF is growing um, 
like Wild. Lots of new projects, new clouds, partners, everything else. And we'd like to see the projects working well together and, and validating that they're looking great on all the cloud providers supporting their cloud native features. So this project is trying to, its goal is to test the projects on the cloud providers and the interoperability between all the projects themselves. The backend testing system is composed of a build cross cloud provisioning stage and a cross project stage. There's also a status repository server with an API and a dashboard to show those results. We want to target all of the CNCF projects. Right now we have CoreDNS, Prometheus, FluentD, Linkerd, as well as, of course, Kubernetes. We're also trying to target non-CNCF projects. We've added the Linux Foundation project ONAP, specifically the service orchestrator. On the clouds, we're targeting all the public, private, bare metal. For bare metal, we're using Packet. And for private clouds, we've added OpenStack recently. I'm going to go ahead and start a live demo so we can see how some of this works. This is the production dashboard. It's updated daily at 3 a.m. Eastern. It shows the different stages of the build system, the deployment, the EDE testing, Kubernetes provisioning, and the status of those. It's testing the stable as well as the head release of the projects. In later phases on some other screens, we may be showing some of the other stable releases. Right now, this is the overview screen. And we have Kubernetes, Prometheus, CoreDNS, FluentD, Linkerd, and ONAP. On the cloud providers, you can see AWS, Azure, Google Clouds, IBM Cloud, Bare Metal, and OpenStack. If we click through, you can go to the commits out on GitHub. For the various projects on the build side, we can go through to see the back-end build system. For ONAP, this actually ties in with their CI system. They're using Jenkins and Nexus for container repository. I'm going to go ahead and start off um, a deploy to see this running. We went ahead and did the builds and the Kubernetes provisioning earlier because that can take anywhere from half an hour to an hour to run through everything, including end-to-end -end tests. And we don't want to wait that long. So I'm going to just kick off the app deployment ADE phase. This is calling out to the API and triggering that. And what this is going to do is start the, we can see it here. It's starting the pipelines that will deploy each of the apps to Kubernetes across every cloud. So there's quite a bit that are going to run through. Right now, it's getting some of the software helm and the containers, um, the container that actually does the deploys ready. And then it'll move on to the app deploy phase here. And we can see it's starting to run across each of these clouds for Prometheus. And this will keep going through as it gets deployed with Helm onto Kubernetes. After that, it will deploy and run the end-to-end -end test, which we try to source from upstream and work with the projects. <coughs> So here's a quick overview of what we were just looking at, all the different um, parts of the dashboard. I want to go through a quick timeline where we've been. So in February 2017, the project started. And then June, we had our first demo to the CI working group. 
that was showing primarily the CI system and the how the different pipelines work to build, provision, and deploy. In August, we demoed to the TOC, showed some of the designs for the dashboard, as well as the API status, um, status repository. And then we had the green light on the design in September. In December, we had some sneak peeks at KubeCon and had the release of the dashboard in January 2018 with the status repository as well as a reworking of the back end to use the different components independently, like provisioning can be used independently, or the app deployment and E to E phase. In March, we've had quite a few new releases, including adding some new projects, new clouds like IBM Cloud. We added OpenStack, as well as the ONAP project, which was our first external integration with the CI system um, outside of GitLab. So that was pretty great. So what's next? We're going to be adding new projects. New clouds on the project sides, Envoy, Jaeger, coming next, and Notary, some others here. We're going to target Oracle is the most likely target for April. We're hoping to have this out and then getting to Huawei, Alibaba. Eventually, we're going to be adding ARM support, starting with Kubernetes on ARM and going forward. Inside the project itself, some of the updates that we're going to be doing would be automating the updates of the releases from projects upstream and testing those and then pushing them out to the dashboard. Right now the process is a couple of steps to get them out. We're also planning on having the history in the API for all of the tests and the artifacts and everything else to be available in the status repository so that it can be queried externally. And you can look up stuff like a version of Kubernetes with what version of Prometheus worked on that and use those externally to the dashboard. This will also help us to do rollback to previous releases. So if we had a failure on 196 on a deploy or maybe ONAP wasn't running, then we could point that out in the dashboard with full tips or whatever else. And that'll tie in with some of the next screens that we're doing. Like probably on a Kubernetes project screen for that filter, we may be showing 1.8 and other stable releases. For the collaboration side, working with other groups, we're working with the OpenCI community that came about from a face-to-face -face before ONS. Um, this past week and working on a collaborative white paper together for how that could look. We've also been working on an RFC for pipeline messaging protocol. Have the link here if anyone wants to check that out. We're going to be working with VMware and IBM Cloud talking about their um, provisioning. We're looking at Spinnaker as a option for doing some of the stuff that we do with GitLab. Now that the cross-cloud system has a layer between the backend um, platform that has workers and runners, as well as some of the projects themselves for their end-to-end -end tests. Prometheus is working on a lot of their end-to-end -end tests, including performance and stuff we're running to tie in and try to see where we can complement directly and reuse those for DNS as well. We're also looking forward to talking um, about the GitOps and how we use it and where we could improve and tie that into the project. The next CI working group is April 10th. We're planning on being at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con in Copenhagen. And we're going to have an intro as well as a deep dive for the project and how folks can get started, whether you're a project or if there's any cloud providers that want to talk to us. Um, OpenStack was really great 
on uh, Chris Hodge, I want to call out for helping, as well as Melvin trying to work with us to add OpenStack support. So we'll be there to try to show how folks can do that and contribute directly. Here's where you can join the CI uh, working group mailing list. And if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to jump on there. If you check out the GitHub CrossCloud CI, we've been updating the readmes. It has an overview in the main and the different components like CrossCloud or CrossProject. We're trying to update those readmes so that you can use the components directly independent of the CrossCloud CI project. That's our update, pretty big from the last time. Any questions? Hi, I have a question from Alban. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, would, it, would it be suitable for testing uh, Kubernetes certified distributions? I'm thinking of KubeSpawn, for example. I couldn't understand that last part. Um, would it be okay to use that for testing uh, Kubernetes certified distributions? And I'm thinking of a KubeSpawn, which is a tool to um, test Kubernetes on a developer's laptop. So we are trying to use Kubernetes conformance test for our conformance on all the cloud providers. Um, there is a conformance SIG and we're trying to follow some of the things that are happening there like feature flags that'll be able to test various features on cloud providers. It could be used. Um, Dan, are you here on the call? Um, hi, I am and, I, and I, CNCF is both funding the cross cloud work and um, running the certified Kubernetes. The, the quick context I'll give you is that on certified Kubernetes, the, the sort of clever part of that program is that although each provider needs to um, pr run their own conformance tests and upload the logs um, in order to certify, the, the, the program also has a crowdsourcing element that any future user or customer of that distribution or platform can run those same tests and evaluate evaluate it and report back if if some API is no longer conformant. And so I'm not sure if there's a CI role for that, and, and we wouldn't necessarily want, be wanting to run a ton of proprietary software um, and having to deal with just inevitable bugs and stuff. And you know we're up to 52 certified um, Kubernetes out there, so that would be a ton of effort. The the part that I am potentially interested in expanding into is um, there's this nascent effort uh, to try and separate out the different cloud aspects of Kubernetes into their own uh, out of tree repos. And then there's some question of, well, how do you ensure that that code is maintained over time and that uh, it, it keeps running? And uh, I would love to see the, the CI, the cross cloud uh, work used to demonstrate um, the you know official out of tree version for each of the new clouds that's that's being developed and to show that um, the head of Kubernetes is not breaking things on it. But um, I, I, that really is a super new effort and and it's just it's a proposal. The code's open source. It's available to the cloud providers and it's something I mentioned on a SIG architecture call. But we'll see if that actually goes forward or not. Um, Alvin, do you want to maybe specify your question a little bit more, or does that address it? Uh, yes, that's all right to my questions. Thanks. Certainly. Great. Um, I, I would love to just hear other feedback on the um, cross cloud stuff. I mean, are there people on the call who this is new to and, and who think this is either kind of cool or you know they might be interested in looking at the terraform recipes that we're using um again everything's under apache 2.0 or do folks see this as duplicative with with other projects out there it's been a, a pretty significant investment from cncf and it continues to be and so we're very interested in feedback um, on whether we're on the right direction or not i have an, another question which 
Which Linux distribution does it use to uh, test Kubernetes, for example? Does it use something like Fedora or Ubuntu or something completely different? Hey, this is Ember from the Cross Club team. At the moment, it uses CoreOS for the underlying OS, but all the structure of getting to everything on the OS is done via CloudNet. So theoretically, we can replace the OS with Debian or CentOS or any CloudNet capable OS. So, so let's say someone wanted to, uh, hey, this is Bob Wise. By the way, it's really looking great. This, is, uh, this has been a great effort. Um, uh, but Bob actually should claim credit as the godfather of this because he's the one who asked for a dashboard 18 months ago. <laughs> Bob, I think it took a little longer than we were expecting, but. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, th this, is, this is really cool. Um, could you comment maybe a little on, uh, you know, some of these questions I think are, hey, we'd like to see something happen, like add some additional thing here. And I, I think you understandably are concerned about explosion of combinatorial, combinatorial explosion. But let's say someone did want to, I don't know, add tests for a different distro as the, as the, other, uh, as the other caller was mentioning. Is there, is there a way for someone to, you know, volunteer effort or um, uh, effort or resources to make that happen? And would you be open to that? Yeah, definitely. The changes should be pretty easy to integrate and it's just expands the matrix. The only, so it would just be a pull request into the code that deals with the provisioning. The only thing that might be a little bit of effort where we haven't quite got to yet is showing matrixes on the dashboard. So it deployed on AWS with this OS and that matrix could get really big, especially when you have maybe networking like Weaveworks, Calico, the matrix just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you need to figure out a way to deal with that at some point, because it'd be cool to show that. Right, I, I think there's some, there are likely some combinatorial issues even just within the projects. For example, um, uh, Kubernetes with Containerd and K Kubernetes with Docker, just to pick like a, I don't know, obvious example off the top of my head. Yeah, definitely. And Bob, yeah. I mean, if there's demand for it, we can add it to the main dashboard. Um, but of course, anybody can also fork this and run their own versions with their own combinations. I, I, I do see the value though in having the, the official version support more things. So Bob, we are planning on having some of those uh, Docker and different choices, and we'll be showing, I think some of those may go on to a sub page or a filtered view to show some of those others versus what is the main view. And then as Dan said, anyone could run the dashboard and the status repository, but any of the components can be split off. And the dashboard is actually all configuration driven so that if you spin up the code then you can point to whatever your configuration is and say I only want these projects to show whatever that may be then that could be used so someone may want to use it just for their project which would be fine right I, I mean I I, I I understand the the possible utility of um, using this to do some other kind of testing but I think I don't know. I, I guess for this, on this, for the sake of the community, I'd rather see more people contribute to this set of tests than than split it off and run it separately. Feels like it would have more value in the long run as long as we can support that. Absolutely. I think when we release the status um, API with the history, it'll be it'll help with having the different scenarios because then we could have different tests that are running that may not be shown on the main overview screen but people could access them either directly via the api or possibly oh. another view which may not be the dashboard but we may have views or some type of big list for the matrix of different scenarios and all the different testing as far as contributing tests 
having any project work on end-to-end -end tests that work outside of their build system, so user end test versus a CI internal only, really helps. So Core DNS is a great example. They're trying to make sure all of their tests will run independently for an end user, and then it doesn't depend on a specialized CI environment. And that's how we've tried to do the test examples, and we're trying to help. So any project that can do that, or if someone wanted to contribute to, say, FluentD and help provide those end-user integration tests, then that would be great, a good way to help. And there's a lot of new projects we'll be adding, so if they're contributing to any of those other CNCF projects, then by the time we get there, if the tests are done, that would be wonderful. What's the, um, I, look, I, I know the point of this uh, isn't scale testing, but just as a matter of curiosity at this point, how, what, what's the sort of, uh, what's the sort of uh, server scale that these tests are being run against? At the moment, there's, it's a three multi master nodes and we're only using one worker at the moment because of the way we had to shrink because of the way ONAP's being deployed at the moment. ONAP doesn't, isn't able to use a single volume. It's got to be all on one host. So it was either set up NFS across all the nodes or just use one worker. So we're just on one scheduler at the moment until the Beijing release comes out for that. Do all the tests even work? with only one worker node? I thought there were some that required multiple nodes. There should be some that require multiple nodes. Um, I think the only one that would give us grief at the moment would be Kubernetes. But we're just running us, we'll just run a subset of the tests so we don't hit that. But if we wanted to do some density tests, then we'll probably get struck by that. Brian, um, I'm not... I'm not 100% sure on this, but I, I'm like 80% sure that conformance tests, Kubernetes conformance tests will pass running on a single node. Okay, I will try to get that fixed. <laughs> I, that, that, that seems, I, I agree, that seems, uh, well, de demon sets would be like an obvious example where that seems. Well, networking would seems like an obvious example. Um, <laughs> even better, even but, better. Uh, yeah, have we, have we defined what that should look like, Brian? Is that something we should do as a TOC, kind of define what that minimal set of compliance? The SIG architecture is. owns that in Kubernetes. Okay. So, have they um, defined that as far as you know? Um, at the moment, I'm, there are a lot of areas where the tests are, we started with the tests that we had. So we're looking at places where the tests need to be expanded. This is definitely one of the areas it looks like. Um, uh, so I had a question, which is, have the folks working on this, I, I'm poking around the uh, GitHub repo looking at the Terraform. Have you talked to the Kubernetes cluster lifecycle special interest group about what you're doing? Um, because I think, you know, reinventing how to deploy Kubernetes is probably dupl uh, duplicates work that the cluster lifecycle SIG is doing. Um, I don't believe we've had a call with Cluster Lifecycle yet. We did have a few calls with Aaron from SIG, the infrastructure SIG. But the I testing. Don't... That would be the testing SIG, I would guess. Yeah. Brian, uh, Aaron and also Tim Hawken have both looked at this and, and um, Jago and, and uh, a number of others, but um, we're not wedded to the uh, Terraform approach that we're taking. So yeah, I think I just uh, think it's going to be hard. We, to we would love to have that. I, I guess I. What's the specific project or code out of Stig Lifecycle that you would compare this to, uh, in terms of uh, actually deploying for the first time and spinning up, spinning down kind of thing? Well, the the uh, Terraform bits that part we call provisioning, and then actually bringing up Kubernetes on it, we call that bootstrapping. Um, there are a number of projects. I think the two main ones uh, would be the cluster API effort and um, and uh, COPS. 
Right. And and so we looked at cops and, and looked thought that Terraform was going to be a more general purpose. But essentially, we're willing to transition off of all of this Terraform onto whatever the official way of doing it is, if there's a, a recommendation on this. So okay. I, I think starting with maybe a presentation to um, cluster lifecycle would be a, a good next step. Yeah, I think that would be a good next step. Yeah, we're discussing how to what our reference implementation be for running our own end-to-end -end tests uh, as we replace the existing deprecated QBOP mechanism. Um, so, I, yeah, I just think if you're maintaining your own on several different cloud providers, that's going to be hard hard to do as the system continues to evolve. Great, we'll take that as an action. Okay. Um, hi, this is Aaron Boyd. I had a quick question. Um, with the Kubernetes testing on the different clouds, is that also testing persistent storage? I know I talked with a couple of you guys in the past about that component. Um, I don't know the criticality of it, but I was curious if that was integrated. At the moment, we're just running the conformance subset and what that gets. So I believe conformance tests some storage, but it's not extensive. But we'd like, like to get to, to a point where we can profile and be like, we're on this cluster, AWS, do a subset of the AWS integrations and include storage. Right. Okay. Thanks. Whoever's speaking is chopping up for me. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, well. incomprehensible. Maybe you can just type it into the chat window instead and we'll read it. Yep. Uh, Yeah, you're still chopping up, so please type it in the chat. I, I don't know who it is, so that, that's the other problem. I guess the question is from Albin, um, is this building only daily tests or would it be plugged to, plugged to a pull request on GitHub is the question. So at the moment, this is a nightly run. So it goes through. Really yeah, so, so not on every pull request. Yeah, not on no. PI. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for the cross cloud folks? Alrighty, cool. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Denver Taylor, and, and everyone involved with the project. It's great to see you progress. Welcome. Thanks for all the great feedback. Appreciate it. Cool. All right. Um, so uh, moving on. Uh, so slide 27, uh, Ken, do you want to give a little update where you are with the reference architecture? I know you're planning uh, your first kind of official meeting um, soon. So it'd be good to kind of get people up to speed and how to get them involved um, yeah, with definitely. the efforts. No problem, Chris. So we are, um, I'm organizing a meeting for next week for the uh, reference architecture work. Um, and there's a, um, a, a, uh, site and I, you know, on a GitHub, there's a location you can um, sign up for that group. And um, you know, just please let me know. I'm looking forward to, um, to meeting uh, next Tuesday with everyone. Cool. Can you also send out a note to the mailing list, Ken, on that one? Just I to can. remind folks. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Any questions for Ken on reference architecture 2.0? Alrighty, so 
Moving on, uh, next up, slide 28. So um, as you're aware, um, CNCF helps put on events for our community and projects. Um, we have a big event coming up in Copenhagen in, in early May, May 2nd to 24th. Um, I will just remind people that uh, please uh, book your hotels early. We are um, gonna sell out of that event and, and hotel space is gonna be a bit of a challenge. So uh, the earlier, um, the better. Uh, we also have uh, two other events that we're hosting the year. Uh, our first event in China and uh, an event in North America in Seattle in, in December. So uh, sponsorships are available for Shanghai and Seattle. And, um, you know, we'd love to, you know, have a huge presence in China, given that it's our first event. So um, please uh, submit talks and uh, consider sponsoring the event. Uh, Dan, you have any other uh, thoughts on call for action here? Oh, just that the call for papers is going to open at KubeCon. So you can begin yep. thinking about it. And we're going to have an option to submit your talks to Shanghai, Seattle, or both. Awesome. All righty. Um, moving on, uh, slide 29. Uh, just a reminder, our next meeting will be April 27th. Um, we'll have two community uh, presentations, one from the Telepresence project and uh, one for a uh, proposed working group around um, security called SAFE. Um, we will also at that time have two new uh, TOC members, so look forward to that announcement. Uh, other than that, um, any other questions? Um, slide 30 is basically open Q&A. We have about uh, 15 or so minutes left. Um, so if anyone has time uh, to ask questions to the TOC or the wider community or CNCF staff, we'd love to, we'd love to hear it. Um, Chris, I have a question. Sure. Uh, Dan Shaw, I'm actually from the, the SAFE group. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, uh, you know, saw the uh, working group process uh, you know, kicking off. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any expectations about you know, how long that, that process is going to uh, take to land. Uh, you know, I see the discussion is getting uh, so, off there. Uh, yeah, I, it's it's hard to say. Uh, my assumption is just uh, follow the proposed template. Um, I actually have a meeting with some other folks from from the safe group today, uh, and I'll guide them through the process. So, uh, in general, you have the slot to present to the TOC next week, or sorry, in two weeks, okay. um, and we'll, we'll we'll kind of follow the template um, uh, as dictated in kind of that PR. I don't think we're going to bar uh, very far from, from what's there. Makes sense. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Dan. <laughs> Any other questions out there? <clears throat> I see Brian and Bob uh, arguing about uh, SIG architecture and what it owns. Clarifying. Clarify. <laughs> <coughs> Any other questions from the community to staff or the TOC? Well, if there's no other questions, um, I'll give everyone 15 minutes back uh, with just a friendly reminder for the TOC members that are on the call to vote on the linkerd to sandbox to incubation proposal. I think Brian Grant is the only one that has put forth a vote. So uh, to Camille, Ken, uh, please uh, consider throwing down uh, a vote before the end of this week. And I uh, hope to see many of you in a couple of weeks where the telepresence project and the safe WG will be uh, presenting. And then uh, hopefully we'll see many of you in Copenhagen uh, in May. So enjoy the rest of your day and uh, here's 15 minutes back. Cool. Take care, everyone. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.